refer any chairman, whoever the heck Welcome to the May 18, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. There. Tonight, first on the agenda, we're going to have the public hearing to discuss and advise the owners of property abutting town property who use town property for the placement of seawalls and other facilities that they must do so in accordance with the provisions of state law RSA 72 colon 23 I B the selectman's policy on how town property is used and other requirements for the protection of the town and the leaseholder. Would you like to open up for us, Mr. Gerald? Uh, yes, the uh, Board of Selectmen have previously been presented at their meeting on March 3, 2014. Can't hear. Can't hear you. You have to speak up. Can't hear. The Board of Selectmen at its uh, prior meeting on March 3, 2014 was presented with the, uh, the form of lease that would be utilized for the uh, leasing of town property uh, which is occupied and, and uh, this would apply to several different beach areas as well as the, um, the forms involved and so when the selectmen were presented recently with the cover letter that would send proposed leases uh, the board indicated that it wanted to conduct a public hearing concerning this. So we're opening up the public hearing who would like to speak? Please join us at the podium. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board uh, and town council. Um, my name is Christos Valhuli. I'm an attorney in Hampton. I've been retained and represent the Place Cove Godfrey Shores Association. Um, it's an association charitable in nature that's been uh, in existence for quite some time. The stated purpose of the organization is to protect and preserve the you know, nature and well-being of strip of beach between the 900s Ocean Boulevard up to the Northampton town line. Um, many of the members of the association and property owners over the last year um, have become aware of the 2013 Selectman's Regulation. Um, that was approved and voted on by the selectmen and uh, there's been a lot of I guess I don't want to call them rumblings but uh, discussion about individuals who have uh, applied for permitting of seawall revetment repair staircase permits etc and the issue of a lease arrangement um, with the town as well as rent to be paid as well as insurance to be provided with the town named as an additional insured on the property owners policy that that has all come up and been discussed amongst the property owners and uh, there's been a pretty high level of concern as to number one where did this come from and number two where is this headed a lot of research has been done uh, into the history of the relationship between the town and the property owners on this strip of beach particularly. Um, there's a lot of individuals who are here tonight who have families who have been on that beach for well over a hundred years. They have personal knowledge of the history of that relationship between the property owners and the town as it relates to sea walls and improvements along what I'll call the, the town strip of beachfront. Um, and everybody uh, is aware of that in the mid 80s those properties, the, the dirt on which they stand, was owned by the town of Hampton. In the mid-80s, it was sold to the property owners with the town retaining the portion of land from the easternmost edge of the property that was sold to the um, mean high tide yep. mark of the Atlantic. Yep. So nobody is arguing that the town owns that 
strip of beach. It's a town beach. The town does a great job with that beach, whether it be the lifeguarding, maintaining the parking lots. It's a, it's a wonderful asset to the town. But part of that relationship has been that the property owners have always maintained the seawalls to protect their property. A large portion of those properties and a large portion of the seawalls are on town property. This relationship has existed for at least 100 years where the property owner maintains the seawall, the staircases, etc. It's been a great relationship. It's been of mutual benefit. I could go on and on about how that relationship benefited both the property owner and the town. Um, I don't need to do that now. It looks like there's a lot of people here, here who want to speak. But for some reason in 2013, the town made the decision to change that relationship and the duties of the parties and the obligations of the parties. And one key component was, hey, property owner, you will now lease your seawall from us. We need a written instrument that documents this new legal relationship. We want you to pay us rent for this seawall that you've never paid rent on before. We want you to insure the town uh, for the seawall for which we've never required insurance before. And you know, from my read and from my discussions with property owners who I have met with, those are the biggest bones of contention. And nobody's coming in here with pitchforks and torches. Uh, what the people I've spoken with would like to do would be to revisit these regulations and have a discussion on, number one, what is the town's concern? What prompted this new set of regulations? And how can we best address these concerns in a way that is beneficial to the town, addresses their concerns about whether it be liability, having some legal relationship, as well as the property owner's um, concerns. Property owner's concerns are very clear and, and obvious. The town is asking that they enter into a five-year lease. There's an unknown after five years. Um, there's a, a, a lease provision that calls for rent for a five-year period. What happens after five years? There's now a RSA that's been circulated with the notice of this meeting <coughs> insinuating and suge suggesting that because you now lease municipal property or town property, you will pay taxes on that as well. So property owners are here. Like I said, the few I have spoken with and the association which I'm representing would love to have a discussion about how to best address the concerns of the town and come up with something that works for everybody. My take on reading everything over the last year, the meetings that have taken place, the minutes that are posted, the regulation itself, my feeling is that this came about because there was a liability concern, because you've got seawalls, you've got stairways. What happens if, you know, little, little Bobby's playing ball and decides to run up somebody's stairway, which is on the town land, and, and takes a tumble and cracks his head open? What then? Well, the town felt that it was responsible. I've researched the issue. I think that that strip of land with the seawalls, with the staircases, is exempt exempts the town from liability. It is public use property. It is part of the state's recreational use statute. This is, you know, the town is afforded um, sovereign immunity in such a situation. You provide a recreational area for a town, for the general public that's open to public use, no fee, well then you're not going to be able to come after the town or the property owner <coughs> for any liability tied to that similar to the basketball courts here in town. Somebody twists an ankle, the town is not concerned about having a use fee and making sure that people sign releases and get insurance for the day. Um, this insurance requirement, this liability concern has never existed. This is exempt property as far as liability is concerned. The town, in fact, has, back in 2013 when the selectmen enacted the new regulations stated specifically we want you to lease this property however you have no exclusive use to this property this is public use property you cannot exclude anybody from your seawall from your stairway it's very very specific that this is to remain public use property it accordingly does fall under the um, the recreational use statute that is afforded by the New Hampshire RSAs 
So if we go back to was this a liability concern, I think there's enough uh, legal standing to state that there is no liability concern. Um, and if that is in fact why this all came about, then we can go back and revisit the issue, um, maybe let the town feel more comfortable or feel that issue out to determine is there or is there not a liability concern. Um, back in 2013, I want to add that when the, I know public notice would have been granted that this was being considered by the selectmen, but the property owners were not given actual notice of this uh, regulation, the selectmen's regulation on seawalls, et cetera, being considered and voted on. They were given notice of this evening's meeting and that the leases are going to be going out, but when the regulation that requires the lease and the insurance and the lease payment, uh, when that was being considered, the property owners were not given similar notice to come in and discuss it at that point. So I think it's very important that they all now be given the opportunity to address issues that they should have been able to address back in 2013. This reg has been on the books with the town now since November of 2013. Um, we're hoping that before we go ahead with sending leases out and jumping to the ends here of sign the leases if you ever want to build a seawall or build stairs, um, that we can revisit the entire issue. Um, and I know that I'm not the only person who'd like to speak tonight, so I'll uh, submit with that. And I want to thank you for your time. Okay, we're going to have um, Mr. Gerald respond first. If we, uh, you can take a seat. That's fine. Yeah. Um, regarding exclusion of the public, the way the regulation was worded back in 2013 is that it's understood that an, an a, a permittee or applicant cannot exclude the public from any portions located on town property by a seawall, revetment, or stairway um, maintained or constructed in whole or in heart on town property. <coughs> without the prior written consent of the selectmen. The lease involved represents the prior written consent so that people indeed, uh, with the lease in hand, can exclude the public from that. Um, this, uh, this program, it seems to me, came in about because that we, had a, we have had in recent years a glut of people coming in for building of mm -hmm. seawalls in light of storms and storm damage. <coughs> and. Uh, some some constructions have been built very far out into the uh, town property. That's the exception, but it, it has happened, and uh, people have been erecting um, uh, facilities on that, such as uh, patios that uh, would seem to be for personal use, which represents a problem. Um, in terms of uh, taxation, yes, a written agreement does enable taxation, although that's not going to be a big amount. This is not going to represent um, new frontage. It's simply going to be a, an additional small area added on to the other land. Uh, the lease really is, is more a, uh, a regulatory vehicle to make sure that the property is properly insured. And uh, although this has happened for many years, there is no grandfathered rights to continue to use town property uh, without specific permission. And this program legitimizes those uses. And so that's uh, what I had to say so far about that. Can Mr. Tinker talk about it? Sure. Okay, Mr. Tinker, you want to join us at the uh, table or the podium? And would you like to give us uh, some information from your standpoint? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, as part of uh, part of the program, we've um, <clears throat> actually physically inspected all of the waterfront properties that front Town Beach. Um, we've created um, maps, which are over here, um, using or utilizing deeds, any any um, recorded plans, and our GIS system to determine estimated land area that each property. Uh, may encroach onto 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 town, a uh, beach. Um, the frontage, um, of course, properties already have a value associated with waterfront, so that that's not going to change. It's just pushing the primary site out. Um, you know, whatever it may be, ten feet, twenty feet, 
whatever that whatever we determined. So to be a, a value associated with the primary site value. So it, <clears throat> I mean, in some cases we do have large areas uh, of land that that encompass this, but a majority of them are, are basically five, six, seven hundred square feet. So it's not a, a anywhere where we're adding, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is, you know, uh, again, we haven't created those values yet, but they should be, um, you know, uh, thousands, but not uh, not twenty, thirty thousand in that in that range. Um, there are about a, uh, 75 properties that we've determined that right now encroach on Town Beach. Um, that number will probably change as we continue our review. Uh, the three areas are uh, uh, Sun Valley, um, mainly along the riverfront. Uh, we do have a plan that depicts that entire section of beach based on uh, the creation of a seawall uh, several years ago. Um, Place Cove, of course, we determined that uh, the majority of those properties uh, have either seawalls or um, uh, land area that encroaches on a town beach area or town property. And then, of course, up through North Beach and, and uh, Northeast Lane, um, all of those properties have some form of seawall, stairs, what, whatever it may be, that we determined all of those properties um, have a varying range of... Uh, Square footage that in, that encroaches onto the town beach or town property. Um, if you want, I can. You know, I mean, I the maps really aren't going to do much, but they are there, um, and that's really where what, we're at. What do you mean they're there? Well, I have maps over here that, of what we. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Gives a better picture. Um, I don't know how to show, but um, we basically determined. Um, you want diesel? Yeah. And you probably want to turn it more toward the audience because we've seen it. Well, I'd like to see it too, Mary Louise. Well, yeah. Um, this is just an overview map, but um, what we've got is uh, this would be the area of uh, North Beach and um, Norris Lane. Um, again, what we did based on existing deeds, existing plans, um, in our GIS map, determined square footage. We also, by physically <coughs> walking, we determined what items appear to be on town property. Mostly revertments, seawalls, or steps are the three major things. There were a couple of patios and things that, that were built out on a larger scale, but not a huge amount of those. Mostly the seawall stairs. And, uh, so do people pay more if they have a patio? Well, the patio would already be assessed as part, as of, the part of their property house. Record card. This would yeah. just entail the land area that it that it's on. That it's on. Now the stairs we haven't assessed, but the stairs basically that's that's really a minimal I mean, really no value, very minimal. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that area. Sorry everybody can't see it. Okay. The other area is if we talked about would be Sun Valley. And Sun Valley was determined through that um, plan that was put to, to um, add seawall area along the riverfront. Um, these entail a little bit larger area, but again, we basically determined the square footage of that area, as well as the fact that the majority of these just had staircases that were going over the riprap. That, that's really all that was uh, evident with those properties. Um, I don't have the exact number of each. I think I gave you a report that mentioned the numbers for each area. Um, the third area was Place Cove. Currently Place Cove, um, at the south end of Place Cove, there's a, a number of properties that actually front an existing seawall that was put there, I'm not really sure, back in the 80s maybe, 
um, which which breaks the properties from the beach. So the area in between this section would be the area that would be uh, part of the lease agreement, or, you know, the, the town beach area that's being occupied. We also have a few properties up at the north end. That's what we've determined <coughs> to this point to be the properties involved. If you have any questions, then. okay. Thank you, um, Mrs. McKenzie. Thank you. Hi, <coughs> McKenzie, 24 Beach Plumway. My remarks will be brief, but I have some insights that might help clarify a little confusion. Um, well, let's see, I want to speak to the houses between Shaw Street North to the parking lot at Joe Billy, Billy Brown, Brown Park. Mm -hmm. I live south of there. My house isn't included. <coughs> but I have the documents just so I, I know that I uh, was approached by a neighbor who had spoken to Mr. Welsh, who thought that the properties identified in that northern stretch of the place called Neighborhood, before you get to the parking lot, were included in this um, because... Hey, guys. Yeah. I'm having a hard time here. Because there isn't um, the institutional memory that in March 31st, 1993, mm -hmm. a town meeting approved a FEMA project to put the breakwater that goes, in, I guess it goes in front of about eight houses north of Shaw Street, and I just want to make sure that it's clear that that isn't a private project at all. I've got the documents to show it. Uh, Mayor Louise, you were a p chairman of the board either in 91 when the Halloween storm yeah. um, caused the concern. Until 94, my dear. But, all right. Yeah. So, um, and then I know Paul Powell was in there at the time. Yeah. But our DPW manager was John Hagen, and it was his idea that he didn't want his guys down there after every storm right. with the equipment pushing the sand back in place. And the only way we could convince um, FEMA to come in was that we had to show that in the Halloween storm, mm -hmm. the no-name storm, the uh, perfect storm, the no-name storm that has three names, yeah. <laughs> that, um, that more than 50 homes were impacted. Yeah. And the people on the front were much less impacted yeah. than the people in the third row and the fourth row back on Ancient Highway because of the low-lying oh. bowl. So that's how that happened. That's it. Any questions? <laughs> no, but I feel free to say all you want and what you're happy with and what you're not happy with. And I encourage everyone to do, do we have that. copies? Oh, yes. absolutely. We don't have any. Well, I will get some for you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And it's also yeah. in the town record because the amendment was voted at the town meeting. Yeah, but the plans mm -hmm. aren't. It's the problem. Um, They've been lost somewhere along the line. All right. When but they flood, the old town hall flooded. All the records oh, that were there before, before they moved over here were all destroyed. I just, what I have are the letters between John Hengen and FEMA and the town. Good. Good. All right. That's Thank great. You. Thank you. If I could just, yeah. Chris Scott Lee once again. And I just wanted to state um, um, in response to town council's position that this is actually not exempt from liability because of the lease. Well, there is no lease in effect as of yet for the majority of the property, so it is still public use land. It is the lease that is being presented to the property owners that would take it out of public use. Nobody here, at least most of the people I know, don't want this to be taken out of public use. It's always been in public use. That's the nature of that beach. Um, and the lease is a roundabout way to create a private right to that seawall and to your staircase and all of a sudden it takes away that uh, sovereign immunity or that exemption for town land. So it, like I said, it's a roundabout way of creating liability um, for the town or for the, the individuals. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, thanks. Thank you. Would someone else like to join us at the podium? Yes, I'd like to just address one feature, Chris has done a wonderful job. That you need to identify yourself. My name yourself. is David Pope. I live at 1052 Ocean Boulevard. <clears throat> I'd like to address just one feature of this. In 1978, this is when the whole thing started, after the great blizzard. Right. And the town decided they didn't want to rebuild the seawall, which was badly weakened at that time. And so that's why they sold the land to us. They didn't want to get up the leases. They sold the land. And they, get, they negated that problem. Now, each one of us, many of the people in this room, have, I have put it in my own house. We put in three times. And I have about 30 grand invested in rocks to protect the mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't seem quite right to me that somehow 
we have put in all this dough. Now, to have a new wall put in there all the way down and 37 houses by the town would cost approximately $4 million today. Okay, vicious type of thing. Now, here you're asking us to lease back the rocks that we've put in, that we've protected the town from having a tremendous expense of having to rebuild the wall. And for 35 years, it was hush quiet. And all of a sudden, this has come up, as Chris had indicated. Now, I think there's got to be a bit of fairness here. I mean, people like myself, I think this is outrageous to have to sign a lease. The insurance company won't insure it anyways. And it just seems unreasonable that we have put all this money of our own, and all the people in the room have, and not being reimbursed for this. I think that perhaps on a fee basis of $10 a year would last forever. So I just put that out there as the idea that what, what really happened and then the no-name storm of 1991, then the, the other storm in June, and so forth. So I just ask you to consider that in, in your, your calculations. Thank you. So, who would like to speak next? I encourage everyone to speak and say what you'd like to say. It's very important. <coughs> yes, my name is Robert Saltmarsh at 1072 Ocean Boulevard. And I signed the lease, or not the lease, I'm sorry, my, uh, the town sold me the property back in 1985. And for the 40 years prior to that, my parents or grandparents had been leasing uh, space on the beach. And as George just said, um, you know, over the years, a great expense to all the homeowners. They've been in putting in uh, walls, rocks, whatever. I mean, there was a storm in, what, 78? There was another one in 87. There was another one, well, just, what, three, four years ago, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and one by one, I've watched my neighbor's walls go down, and each time we sit there saying, okay, better do something here, okay? And I have to say, and I think I, most of the people in this room would say the same thing, I had no idea in the 30 years that the town had any interest in that strip of land. I had absolutely no idea, okay? Call me stupid if you want. I read the deed, and it goes, oh, yeah, the grantor retains the right between the ocean and some pile of numbers, but there's no diagrams. So I don't know what the numbers are, okay? And so one by one, we all went about protecting our homes. And at this stage, I think many of us feel like we're being held hostage by the town from protecting our property, okay? That unless we sign this lease, we're not allowed to go out and protect our property. And that really seems kind of unfair in that 30 years, we had no idea the town had any interest in what was going on there, other than, you know, the normal thing of get a building permit whenever you're trying to do something. In fact, as recently as five years ago, I built a new house. That was before this committee four or five times. I always felt very fairly treated, by the way. Can't say the same about the state, but I always felt very <laughs> fairly treated by everybody here, okay? I had, here I am submitting all this stuff to the state, diagrams, you know, deeds, and so on. Um, no one here said, by the way, we have an interest in that property too. No one said a thing. Seems like you guys <coughs> should have been signing the application with me for the state. So I guess, Going along with what others are saying, it seems after 30 years, even the IRS can only go back seven years. I mean, and they're not exactly a popular institution, as I'm sure you all agree. Um, that after 30 years to suddenly raise your hand and say, hey, by the way, uh, we have an interest here, just doesn't seem fair to a lot of us. Okay. Now, I know, I know, because I, I was friends with your mother. Mm -hmm. How, when did your family actually take possession of that land? I believe 1937. Yeah, I was going to say it's been a really long time. It could have been 35, and, uh, 37 more or less. And then the deed, it actually transferred to me in 1982, and then the town yeah. or sold us along with everybody else here in 1985. Mm -hmm. And I think there trial. are many people in the room, there are actually a significant number of people along the beach that have been there for generations and would like to continue being there for generations mm -hmm. and have enjoyed it and I think them good town pay, good taxpayers. <laughs> we appreciate it people like you that keep up your properties and do everything, but thank you very much. And that's what we've been trying to do. So like I say, um, we feel a little bit held hostage at this stage. Thank, thank you for coming in tonight. Sure. Who else would like to speak? I would please. My name is Jeff Gove. I'm over in Sun Valley, 7th Thornton Street. I think you're going to find, and forgive me a little bit because I am a commercial developer and I deal with leases all the time. With a five-year lease, and nothing beyond that, you are going to put a chilling effect on the property values. How are you going to sell a house that you can't protect? How are you going to redevelop a lot? How are you going to initially develop a lot? 
good luck. I mean, you could put property values right through the floor, effectively. Because you're going to have to disclose this, because it's going to be known to everybody. It's going to be a lease. I assume you're going to want to record the lease, or at least a memorandum of lease. Uh, you got a problem, folks. I personally, I develop shopping centers. It's not a problem to name somebody as an additional insured. Um, I don't see that as an issue, but I certainly see a five-year lease as a huge problem. Never mind the dollars that go along with it. That's almost inconsequential, comparatively speaking. But uh, Sun Valley was a little bit different, I think, in the way it's unfolded over there. I mean, we put that stuff in. Well, we, I think there were 19 of us, I think, that got together and permitted that seawall initially. And uh, we did it all at our own expense. And then I was one of the last ones. That, I'm 7th Orton, so I'm all the way down close to the bridge. And I actually had to get uh, Frank Richardson out one day after the April storm. How many years ago was that? It all runs together. Yeah. To get an emergency order from him to save my house because it was washing right into Thornton Street. I don't know if those improvements would still be there today if Frank hadn't given me that order. And uh, as, I, as I agree with everybody here, now doing it in retrospect, or well, looking at it here and, and going backwards just doesn't seem quite fair. But my bigger concern is what we're going to do to values. So, and I don't know if anybody's thought of that. Thank you. Thank you. Could, could we Who have, else would like to speak? Could we have council address the renewability of the leases? Um, I think that's... People are uh, raising some good points that I'm sure the selectmen will want to consider. Uh, right now there's no automatic renewal on the leases in as much as they're personal to those who are signing them. Uh, but I'm sure they'll take into account what people have to say. Okay. And who would like to speak next? Please join us at the podium. It's very important. The more you say, the more information we have. <laughs> Hi, I'm Suzanne Batrella from 32 Beach Plum Way, um, Sandy's neighbor. Um, I'm I just wanted to express my disappointment that this is a surprise, and I did. I appreciate that we got the notice about the meeting tonight, because of course it's it's very important to to us and our our homes and our home values, um, you know. But it seems like uh, this shouldn't be a surprise, you know. Sitting in this room, I think are um, some of the town's lifeblood that really contribute greatly to this town. And, um, you know, something like this shouldn't be a surprise to, to its citizens. Um, and, you know, today I, I, I stopped by to just ask some questions because I, I didn't even understand what this, this letter was about. And um, I, it's all in legalese, so it really wasn't clear if I was even um, my property and, and my home and the land in front of it would, would be in front of it. And, and I have to say, I, I knocked on a few neighbors' doors today and all of us were sort of like, well, this can't apply to me. So I'm really concerned of those who are not in the room today that this has kind of come as a very big surprise because if I understand this correctly, we're about to, you know, get these leases sent to us and, you know, there's going to be a whole other wave. Um, so I'd ask you to think about that in the communication regarding the action here um, because I, I really feel, as is with the case with my home, is that although there was no record of it with the town, um, there should be enough institutional knowledge here to know if there was a FEMA project that was partially funded by the town. And, um, you know, that, that's my, you know, our, our uh, responsibility to prove that. We, we will. And, and we've, we've found some documentation without trying really hard. But um, I would ask you to, to think about making sure before these go out and you go to the time and expense of having to fight these things with individual homeowners all along this coast to, to maybe take a pause and um, make sure that you've, you've got that right, you know, what's going to be um, included in, in the action. Thank you. Mr. Stoney, would you like to join us?
uh, Henry Stoney and uh, Mary Jo Stoney. Uh, we are full timers at 1050 Ocean Boulevard here in Hampton. Uh, I purchased the old Dory Inn. Mm -hmm. Some of the old timers might know about it. Even beforehand, it used to be called the Christmas Inn yeah. in red and uh, green. And it was on leasehold land. That whole stretch was leasehold. And over the years, we noticed something. The wall was there. There's reference to the wall. It's almost obliterated now, but before there was the thought in town that that could be a walkway from Place Cove right up to the Northampton uh, mm -hmm. area by, by the uh, public. But over the years, we've noticed that it started to deteriorate in various places, especially at the seams. Mm -hmm. And one by one, parts of it started to move yeah. and be washed. And then came the uh, big storms. Now I looked up Peter Randall, and he indicates that in his book, Seven Major Storms, the early one that's there, even I think there was some huge storms during the 60s while we were there. But he indicates 1972. Let's take that as a marker. And during that horrendous storm, it started to come up the ocean. It started to hit many of the buildings mm -hmm in that area, and especially that seawall that we consistently hear about. And we were in the Dory Inn at that time. At that time we had uh, 10 uh, units in the new, new Dory Inn that uh, we built into condos later on, now has nine. But there, there were 10 seasonal uh, uh, apartments with people living in there. And we watched the ocean come in, doing this to the seawall. Not only moving over and up, hitting the building, but then going underground, and one by one, that seawall started to disappear underneath the rushing waves and different elements of sand. And we stood there petrified because the corner of the old Dorian in the southwest corner, the water was coming in three feet away from the building. And the s sand, mind you, everything at that time, at least in the proximity to the Dory Inn, was sand. Sand in front, sand in rear, sand on the sides. And the water came in. In some cases, as you, some old timers would remember, came in the the houses themselves and went out the back or front doors, as you would have it, into Route 1A. Yes. And there were two riverlets on the sides of the buildings. And it was a wonder. You could see shards of household furniture floating down 1A going south. So we were kind of terrified, and I think 
someone called, was it Walt of Vanderpool? Probably, yep. One of the selectmen. Yep. Walter came down. I met with him. I said, Walter, look. And uh, we, we had to move every time the waves started to hit the front of the building. And I said, what do we do? And he says, well, not much we can do. And I says, why? He says, well, it isn't in the budget. And I thought to myself, uh-oh. <laughs> And I said, well, can't the uh, town works come up or whatever? I, at the next tide, maybe move some of the uh, sand once the waves go down so, to block it because that second tide is the worst tide. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, he says, I don't think I can get the selectmen together. Well, what to do? And then I thought of another uh, line. I said, well, I'm going to call Vic LaSalle. <laughs> <laughs> Called him. I said, Vic, this is the situation here. And, of course, he lived apart from the ocean. He said, well, I'll go and take a look at it. He came down. He said, uh oh, you got trouble here. I said, I understand. And what to do? He said, well, he said, we have to wait for the tide to go down. Then we could roll some or push some sand up, which he did after bringing some of his machinery in and some of his workers. And he says, let's see what happens tomorrow morning. And so we waited, and luckily it wasn't uh, as bad as the day before, the night before. <clears throat> he said, you can't leave this here. He says, the next huge tide may come and take out all of this gravel and so I, what, what do we do? He's, we'll have to put boulders in, riprap. Yes. I wasn't understanding what riprap was, but <laughs> I found out soon enough, especially its cost. <laughs> <laughs> and so he brought in with his trucks and his dozers. And mind you, up to that point, there wasn't one huge boulder on most of that line. There were the boulders on a more elevated, uh, uh, a couple of houses, three or four houses up uh, on the hill before you get to Place Cove. And so we lasted out that night and day. And I said, well, what happens now? He says, we'll have to start bringing material in. But he says, I need to talk with the <coughs> selectmen. They did come after. They looked at it, and they gave the OK at that time. Now, that, that was in the, either the late, the late 19... 60s or the early 70s. 70s. And there were, in most places, a trace of <coughs> the wall. It was just gone. A few parts of the wall were still there in certain forms of the stretch. Since then, I have been myself because the Department of Environmental Services came in with their own regulations and, and after those major early storms, then we had to apply even to fix 
the parts of the stone that was there. And what we try to do, or they try to do, is to lock it in so that in the summer it would be safe, so that be no loose stone. And of course, talking with Vanderpool at that time, I said, well, if I pay for this, the town won't pay for it. Oh no, he says that they won't. And then I thought, well, don't you maintain the beach? And he says, oh yes. But to what extent, I thought, possibly, you know, picking up the seaweed when it was waist high or something like that. <laughs> and every year, it seemed that I was down in Portsmouth and Concord filling out new applications for touching up rocks that had moved and trying to get it in a locked position. We fairly well succeeded. And increasingly, uh, we, uh, we feel now a huge element of safety with all of that stretch with the riprap in, uh, in place. So again, the town, with its ability to have the power, mm -hmm. can make some of the laws, but I haven't noticed in our <coughs> area at all that the town does any kind of maintenance, even sometime when it's called on to do it. Now, I'll just leave it at that. And I just like one or two minutes to inquire on the notice of this hearing um, and to ask for further trans a translucent idea of what is occurring within the board. I notice that you have uh, here the statement, the selectman's policy. I mean, do you have a, a, a new policy about these folks' properties? Is it written? I'd like to see it in some <coughs> form so you could pick it up and look at it in a written form. The um, the last sentence in your notice of hearing indicates that other requirements for protection of the town property and the lease holder may also be approved. I mean, this is an open-ended assertion. And I wonder how many of us have written blank checks with our signatures to our other people to fill in. I'm <coughs> looking also that the board, for one reason or other, are trying to defend their association, quite rightly, with property that belongs to the town. But also, I would like to see consideration of people in the administration of the town attempting to protect the individual property owner that have gone through 
so much, especially financially. I'm sorry if I took some time to shut and shut my wand, but <laughs> Henry, we're delighted to see you and your neighbors. Who would like to speak next? Please join us at the podium. Hi, I'm Peg Aronian, 28 Beach Plum Way, and I have uh, two observations. The first has to do with the length of the lease. When the gentleman brought up the whole issue of a five-year lease potentially devaluing property, um, it reminded me of when we bought 28 Beach Plum Way in 1971, and we had a 15-year lease for the town with the town, and that meant any bank that we went to would only give us a 15-year mortgage. And if someone is saddled with a five-year lease, I don't know of too many five-year mortgages. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. And um, I, I was thinking, I was getting these pictures in my head of the storms that we've endured um, and the the uh, big stone walls that, that folks have put up at their own expense. Uh, and I wonder what kind of money those walls have saved the town of Hampton. Because if you think of those walls deteriorating and breaches in the big dunes, or what used to be dunes, uh, you get two or three of those on a big storm if people decide they're not going to go to the expense of maintaining these walls. Uh, and then you, it, it seems like it could be pretty catastrophic. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe the town of Hampton ought to pay the landowners for protecting the property and saving the expense of building a seawall if that's what an alternative would be. Who would like to speak next? Yes, name is Ed Moran, 1066 Ocean. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the survey, which I, I think is questionable. It was done, I believe, in the 70s. <laughs> Uh, 2007, April, there was a big storm that took down the seawall at 1066, and in a good neighbor policy, uh, it took the next house down and the next house down. So no one shot me, but the, the uh, three seawalls went down, and by the time that I got there, I was out of state. Uh, the sand had, the front lawn had gone away, and, and it was up to the the uh, foundation of the house was, was the main buffer from the ocean. So we applied to DES and uh, we were allowed to, to uh, begin to try to salvage the place. Certainly it was our property uh, when we were on the front lawn and uh, we got an emergency permit and the planning board and the conservation district respected that by only taking from April till January. Uh, it was eight months to have an emergency permit. And it was like star chamber proceedings. That's history, but people tend to keep their mouths shut about inequitable situations because they're afraid of the towns. Local government, state government. So. We filled in and we spent, the three houses spent $450,000 over the winter to build a seawall that I'm assuming is good enough now that when the houses wash away, we'll be able to have a picnic on the seawall. But the point was that when the survey was done, because the land was gone uh, initially, and we did this, the survey after the fact, uh, some of the some of the homes had the survey the land going 
beyond the seawall, some had halfway through the seawall, and some were a quarter of the way through the seawall, so that you, you were half on town land, half on your own, and some were completely on their own. And the, the fact that no one ever mentioned anything, no one ever volunteered to spend the money to save it, and even with legal theories, if you have something on the land, supposedly own it to the center of the earth in, in legal theory, and I know legal, uh, unless you're out in Montana or places, or it's getting to be Pennsylvania now, where you have uh, mineral rights, normally you have the ownership. So if somebody makes this fiction, we've never, we've never had a lease. Uh, a land lease to separate the seawall, the rocks, whatever, from the land underneath it. The money that's been spent and where those, where those lines demark our land and the town land uh, have never been discussed. And uh, the DES, when we sent the permits, never, never asked a question about whether we owned it or they assumed it was is that we owned it. <coughs> And I, I think it's, it's a very serious issue uh, of unfairness when you can say to somebody that we own it and it's the buttress from the ocean, but your, your please, oral agreement, no agreement, you can take care of it. And you can spend more, almost a half a million dollars uh, trying to protect the property. So I, I think it's worth reviewing that survey as a basis before we uh, get too far down the road with these these uh, short-term leases. It's, thank you. And where is your property that you're referring 1066. to? 1066. So 1066. that's on, that's like north of the Dorian? The Dorian. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Who would like to speak next? Please feel free to get up and uh, say something. Uh -huh. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Bob Casaza for Al Casaza, 5 James Street, south of where the gentleman was talking. So a little uh, different uh, part of the beach than we've been discussing. Um, is the town currently dealing with any claims of liability relative to any of the properties that appear on Mr. Tinker's maps? Hmm? What was that question? Mr. It's hard to hear you, Excuse Bob. Me. Sure. Is the town currently dealing with any claims of liability relative to any of the properties which appear on Mr. Tinker's maps? Negative. Is the town... In my time, Bob, just to answer your question, in my time, when people are injured at the beach, even if it's on state property, they turn to us and they, they try to make a claim, which then we attempt to fend off people who step into holds on the stairways uh, that are on state property. And so we've been able to fend those off. You just never can predict when those things happen, even if we have no current claims or have not seen claims. When people build the structures, uh, whether it be seawalls or stairways on town property, and someone is injured on those structures because for whatever reason they've been built negligently, I'm concerned that that uh, Attorney Val Hooley's statement regarding the, um, the allowing people to use town property for recreational purposes gives you uh, some immunity. The injury in that case would not be on the town property because we, we don't own the walls, we didn't construct the walls, we don't own the stairways. These are things that are put there by others and where this this program would legitimize that use. Mr. Chairman, point of order. It's, it's a long meeting with a lot of people. Uh, the question was simple. I know during my tenure there has been no litigation for the answer to your question. Okay. okay. Um, what happens, excuse me, <clears throat> what happens if these leases circulate and the property owner does not sign them? <clears throat> so a, a lease issues to a property owner and it's not signed. Yes. Yeah, the selectman's regulation that was enacted back in 2013 indicates that without uh, the permission to use, then it's a trespass. 
that's what it's considered to be according to the regulation. And I guess I'll extend my question, what happens? That's, uh, that's up to the selectmen how to deal with that. Thank you. Yes. Who would like to speak? <clears throat> Is this the original motion? Christos Falolita, once again. I would just like to follow up on Attorney Kazaz's question, um, and I think I have the response to his question. If you do not sign the lease, you will not be permitted to protect your property. You will not be granted a permit from the selectmen nor from conservation to erect and maintain your seawall. So I think it was um, Mr. Saltmarsh who suggested that we're being held hostage. We can't protect our properties unless we sign the lease. The lease then creates this legal relationship which puts the liability on the homeowner or creates a liability issue. But for the lease, there is no liability to the town. I don't think there is an instance that I can recall of, and I, I, I am a personal injury attorney. I'm not aware of any personal injury actions against the town on these seawalls, on these stairs. I'm not aware of any where the town has been named as a party. Um, but more importantly, if that lease is not signed, there, this is public use. This is recreational use, and the town is protected. The lease will all of a sudden put it in, it becomes private use, non-recreational, doesn't, the town will lose its exemption. Thank you. Yes, and would someone else like to join us at the podium, please? Uh, Bob Solomon, 16 Norris Lane. Um, I just want to bring back the issue of the duration or the length of the lease. Um, I'm facing I'm, my property right now is in need of repair of the seawall, um, and I'm facing tens of thousands of dollars, and I really just don't know what happens in five years. Should I make that investment and um, potentially not be able to renew that lease or potentially renew that at uh, you know, a cost which is significantly higher than the uh, the $100 a year, the $500 over five years that we might have. So I'd be looking for assurances, and I really want the selectmen to, um, you know, think about that renewal issue and put yourselves in my shoes or any of the landowner's shoes who are looking to make these investments and make sure that they will last for a long time. Thanks. Thank you. Who else would like to join us at the podium? It's very important. Again, please feel free to say what you'd like. This is your opportunity. Uh, yes, uh, good evening. My name is Doug Pope, uh, 1052 Ocean Boulevard. I'm the uh, son of David and Suzanne Pope. Uh, Chris says, what's the formal name of the... No, the liability law, the... Um, Recreational Use Statute, it's New Hampshire RSA. 508.14. Okay. I would like to know what has changed in that statute from when I was a child jumping off the seawalls at the Boothman's house, the McGregor's house, the Pierce's house, the Judkin's house, the Carroll's house, the Demers house, the Saltmarsh's house. What, what's changed? And I don't think anything's changed. I've asked the question, I don't believe anything's changed. And so I wonder if the selectmen aren't making more of an issue than needs to be made. I think the, the town is covered, and uh, we would, we would you know, appreciate you continuing to work with Christos to try and work to a, a, you know, a solution that, that makes sense. Um, the, um, for example, little things like uh, naming the town as a named insured, that raises all kinds of questions and could be, in fact, a tax. Effectively, if you have to change insurance carriers because you've got a higher risk portfolio, people ask questions. So, you know, I mean, things, small things like that need to be considered. And um, th this really doesn't need to apply to what's, what's been going on really since I've been a child. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else like to join us at the podium? 
I'd like to add one more thing if I could. The more I think about the lease issue, the more troublesome it becomes. Um, term and terms, so to speak. To me, and I'm only speaking for myself, not on behalf of anybody else, it would be a much more palatable solution if the liability is really your issue. Um, I would rather see you do a survey of all the affected properties so that you know exactly what is and what isn't on town property currently. Do an appraisal of that based on that survey and offer us the right to either lease it or purchase it. And then you can put a deed restriction in that permits public access across it. That would solve your access problems to the beach as well as your liability issue. At least it would for me, very easily. So that as a I think would be a very good alternative. Thank you. Anybody else like to uh, speak? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the board. Um, Closing the public hearing at what time? At 8.10. Okay. I would like to say that um, just looking here at when this motion was done, this was done in 2013. That's the one year when I was not here on the board, and that's why I, you know, it's some 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 of these things I don't really have the answer for because um, I wasn't privy to this discussion. Um, I would like to say though, in the other eleven years that I've been on the board, there have been times when people um, have been having the seawalls fixed where I believe we had them have insurance, right, Mr. Welch? Insurance to have their contractor on town property yes. operating, yes. And I know that it was very standard that we do this, even though there haven't been any problems. And, you know, and, uh, I think part of what, this is just my feeling, part of what opened up uh, the conversation lately has been there have been people that haven't done exactly what they promised to do on these pieces of property and I do feel that probably maybe this board and maybe other boards have been made to feel that there is a possibility of some um, liability uh, I mean some of the people there was one that even had electrical outlets right down here close to the water. Mm. And these type of problems brought up red flags, I know, for this board. But I, again, this was done um, in, in 2013. I believe Dick Nichols was the uh, chairman. Yep. Mary Louise, you were on that yes. board. Yep. Um, I don't think we've really ever had any problems. I myself feel similar to almost everyone in this room. Um, I don't know exactly. I think I don't know if we need to relook at the, take another look at this. Mm -hmm. I can understand how people feel about the idea of these leases because I've been coming here to Hampton for more than 50 years, and everybody knows that there was a problem with you know there was lease land and everyone when I was a kid. The property that I live on wasn't lease land, and my parents used to say, "Oh, thank God, we don't have lease land." And, <laughs> Everyone would, you know, through the years say, oh, lease land, it doesn't really mean anything, and people would buy property. Well, you know what? In the end, when it was towards the end of the 90s, it meant a lot. And it, what, there, was, there were many problems. And in the end, a lot of people were very sorry that they were involved in the lease land. I don't think this is quite the same as the lease land. And I'm not really sure of the last gentleman that spoke. Did you say something about buying the property? Buying the Trust me, if you do that, you'll really pay. So that's not a good idea. So I wouldn't pull it that one around again. You're absolutely wrong. Based on the way I suggested it be done. Yeah. Because the value is going to be based well, on Well, one, one of the things that happens with the town is if you lease even one little parking space, you do have to pay uh, property tax on that one parking space. So that's part of the background here, too, that there are the that people that do lease anything from the town of Hampton are required to pay some type of a lease. Uh, I, you know, I personally, personally sympathize with uh, everything that everyone's saying, and I'm glad everyone's had, had something to say, or the people that got up and spoke, I appreciate it. And I think it is probably going to be revisited. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, I have 
a lot of thoughts, and you guys have raised wonderful points. Uh, Council is going to kick me if I if I go in the wrong direction. I'm going to give you a little perspective. First of all, you have purchased uh, land that is in a beautiful uh, location, but very risky. You're far more at risk for your property than I am on Little River Road. I think what triggered a lot of this is the uh, the Northeast Lane area and the northern end uh, of the beach where people were constructing newer homes coming to the planning board, and I sat on the planning board for some of those proposals, and asking to have better protection. Some of the pictures I saw of storm damage were terrible, with all kinds of boulders and in the house. It, it's it's a big problem. The planning board then was addressing trying to give permits and authorization for the revetments, uh, no longer riprap that Henry is referring to, but actual revetments, big, big boulders, big blocks of stone. I happened to stand at uh, 1058 a couple of weeks ago on the Curtis property and I was looking at that. That is an impressive wall in that area. That is a beautiful wall. But it is anticipated that as properties become, uh, as property owners are working harder to protect their property, the planning board is probably going to have more and more applications for people to build, such as the walls that you're seeing from Northeast Lane down. Um, it, it, you are at a big risk. The seas are rising. They had an article today on the news that the Antarctic, one of the big Antarctic uh, plates or sheets is ex expected to melt by 2020. And tonight actually is the, an extremely high tide because of the location of the moon. You are at huge risk. We understand that we want to protect your property as a town. We need to protect your property. You're a valuable tax base. If you want to be cold-hearted about it, we want to make sure that the taxable property in your areas is protected. Um, in my mind, and I'll be happy to stand corrected, the seawalls and revetments are not for recreational use. I don't consider anybody climbing on that stuff recreational use. It is dangerous. Uh, I had questions with the planning board and some of the revetments that they authorized where there were stairs and curving stairs and as Rick mentioned some of the uh, electronic uh, wiring going down by the beach. Um, basically I would, and I may be wrong, but I would call the revetments and seawalls an attractive nuisance because that is a public beach. The sand area up there is public, and kids go there. We used to bring our kids up there when they were little. And, it, you know, what do kids do? Well, run away from dad and mom and run up the wall and fall and bust their head, I suppose. So there is a big risk with some of this stuff. We need to protect you. We need to protect your property. I think there's going to be an ongoing push in, in all the areas that Ed outlined there to build better build more secure, probably build higher, because you are going to be at huge risk. The storms that Henry was, was mentioning, which were terrible storms, are probably going to get worse. You're in a very vulnerable area. And for Patty, where I lost track of where she's sitting, I remember when Place Cove was built up in the 70s, I think, the houses were lifted and garages and concrete were put on the bottom because Place Cove itself, not just on the oceanfront, is at huge risk of flooding. Um, we certainly need time, I need time, to really take a hard look at this. Having you come in is tremendously helpful. We do want to protect your property. We need to protect your property, but we need to do it intelligently, do it together, and hopefully bring the planning board in on it. I've asked to have the planning board set up a... Um, a system of some type of uniform design of these revetments so that your property isn't endangered by a bad revetment design on the part of your neighbor. There are lots of factors that come into this. But thank you so much for coming and, and call us or send notes or something if you think of other things after this meeting is over. Yeah, I would just like to say to that one woman... You didn't kick me. 
uh, I'm the lady that got up that had the white, uh, yes. Uh, she, uh, you know, said why were they not uh, notified or whatever. This is the type of way that you'd be notified to give you a yeah. chance to talk. And that this is so that's sort of part of uh, making this all bring it out to the public, and that's why you're given your chance to talk. So this is part of that process, Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, folks, for coming in tonight. Uh, Mr. Pope the Younger asked what has changed, and uh, since you were a child, and um, I think you've aged much better than I have, Mr. Pope. But um, the answer is everything has changed um, drastically, and. Uh, it has uh, sometimes been the role of government to delve into the minutia and to make everything exactly perfect as lawyers and appraisers uh, and accountants and uh, technocrats would have it. Uh, you people um, have some idiosyncratic challenges uh, with your occupation of some of the most beautiful property uh, on the planet down there, and you've done a stellar job, and you continue <coughs> to do so. The town's indebted for your, uh, your keeping of the property, the real property in one of the most uh, challenged uh, uh, geographic areas uh, on the planet. And that, uh, that Atlantic Ocean uh, is a challenge for you. You've invested a huge sum of money, not only in your personal property, but to protect on-town property with those, with those walls. And while not perfect, um, it's a, a magnificent, expensive investment on all of your parts. And it does protect tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. And hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue to the town, the majority of which goes to educate children at our public schools. So thank you for that. Uh, each and every one of you made great points. The package that we have here before us, and we get a lot of packages uh, under Chairman Nichols, uh, the minutes uh, uh, are populated with comments from three selectmen that no longer serve on the board and Mrs. Wolsey, uh, I am silent in the minutes, and I don't actually recall saying anything. I don't support this, uh, however well-intentioned it is by town council and uh, the uh, executive leadership in this town. I think uh, um, sometimes the quest for the perfect solution uh, creates a nightmare, and I think that's the road that we are on with this. And I think that uh, uh, there's a better way. The minutes that are part of this attachment um, from several years ago from former bed board members, uh, there is no vote, there is no adoption of any legal contract, there is no adoption of this presence uh, uh, of this, this effort. It simply uh, states, the chairman states, that he thinks there's a consensus and uh, that chairman no longer serves here. Uh, those board members in the majority do not serve in this board. So I think, uh, for me anyway, this is a dead issue. Uh, it's uh, well-intentioned, but it's seriously flawed. And each and every one of you, including uh, our commercial real estate developer, um, makes excellent, excellent points that this, uh, this really challenges you um, in a, uh, a real property way for real estate tra transactions and values. Uh, and that's all I have to say, and thank you for coming in. Thank yeah. you. And I would just like to say, too, to sort of answer some of these questions, although I can't remember exactly what the answer was, because those are the type of answers you got from Vic Lassard. You really didn't know exactly <laughs> what he was saying. But I know that when I was on the um, zoning board, served with uh, Henry out th over there, um, in fact, that's probably when you got sucked into the ZBA, when you met Vic that time, I, I can imagine. Um, but I know that um, Vic always said to me that he was re, uh, directly responsible for putting that piece of land in front of that lease land. You know, he, that was, I don't know if it was his idea or if he was on that committee or whatever that decided that. But he did that to protect the town um, and to protect your properties too so that you had some control over who would come up those stairways or whatever. or. I believe everyone was always supposed to be able to come up the stairs, as, as I remember it. Um, but they, that's so that the town would be able to have a position. That's why that uh, strip of 20 or 25 feet was put in there. And that's how he explained it to me. The other thing I'd like to ask uh, before Mr. Waddell talks is I can't remember what it must have been a storm that we had, um, Mr. Welch, when. Uh, 
we had to go and uh, either help out one of the people down there that had a uh, possibility of something bad happening to their property or whatever. Uh, what, do you remember what I mean? This wasn't that many years ago. I do. I'd only been here a month. It was in 2007. Uh, yeah. And we, we had a wall collapse. Yeah. We were in jeopardy of losing up to five houses. Yeah. I didn't bother to ask the selectman. I just called everybody and got them to put the wall back. Uh, that's the way you're supposed to function as a municipality. I knew this federal government was going to pay for it, so it's not a big deal. You just need to step in and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I think to answer Mr. Kazaz's uh, question, I think there's a very easy answer to it. The answer is nothing. Nothing's going to happen. Nobody's going to get taken to court. If you don't sign a lease, you don't sign a lease. What the law says is that if you occupy municipal property, you have to be taxed for that occupation. It's a minor occupation. It's a nothing occupation. You're not having a new lot. The, je the law just says you have to be taxed for it, and we have to do that. And I've run into that in a couple of other towns. The board needs to review this. They need to look at what was done by the previous board. They need to go back in and take a close look at what's, what's going on here. There's a lot of information that was provided here tonight that we didn't have. I can tell you some of this information, such as the FEMA grants, there's no record of it in the town at all. <coughs> Uh, if, if, if there was a record in the town, we wouldn't even be talking about it because it's just the way it is. You folks control, through your good deeds, what happens on the ocean front in this community where you live. Without those good deeds, your properties wouldn't be there because the Atlantic Ocean would have recovered much of it. And that seawall collapse in 2007 made a very good point of that. If we hadn't worked down there for 48 hours to, to seal that breach, those five units, five houses would have gone, and we would have had the Atlantic Ocean down on Route 1A, and it would never have been recovered. So that's the town's process. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if it happens again, I'm going to be the first one down there uh, with all the equipment I can muster to put that back, and the federal government is going to pay for it. So. I think we need to re-review this. I think we need to review what the town is doing, and we need to come up with a policy that can be sustained. Um, I would just like to say now, Mr. Welch, uh, now you mentioned about the federal government paying for it, but in reality, if the town has to go down and do something for these different um, homeowners, uh, that wouldn't the town bill them at Actually, some point? Actually, we build no one. We didn't bill a soul. No. The federal government came in. They. Um, because the properties were in danger of going into the Atlantic, the federal government wouldn't take. The Coast Guard came down. They said, no, you have to stop this. There were oil tanks involved. In fact, I think there was a 2,000-gallon oil tank Ooh. beside one of the houses that was in danger of going in full of oil into the Atlantic. Uh, we stopped that from happening. Uh, I knew immediately when we saw the situation and what was going on, because I've handled one before, that the federal government and the state government would step in, back us up, and they would pay the costs. The town of Hampton paid only the salary of our employees who worked that day, or those two days. That was it. That was our total liability. The federal government picked up all the rest. I'm certain they'll do it again because it's a matter of public urgency to do it. And one reason why the town would uh, want uh, to make sure that it's protected is because if your house was to go, so would the street down below. Chances are the storm was bad enough, and people realize that. So that's why I was kind of really surprised. I'm, because I know that I personally never had anything to do with this. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Being the last one to speak, I will be extremely brief. Thank you for everybody for coming in. Everybody had really, really good points to make. And I, for one, I agree with, with Mr. Bean. You know, I'm not going to take any punitive action against somebody who has been protecting their property. So it's a complex problem that needs to be looked at, and it will be revisit. Uh, we will revisit it, and we will give it, you know, the the – Take into consideration everybody that you've said tonight, and uh, thank you for coming. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Why do we need to close the Just for a couple of minutes. We'll work on that later. Thank you. I've got yeah. this item to finish. Uh, the other side. Um, whatever, you know. Thank you so much.
have a usual. Yes. As usual. Thank you. Hey, Chief, what up? I was quick. I was quick. I heard. You cost us seventy five thousand dollars? I see. Mm -hmm. said the blind man couldn't see it all. Uh -huh. I, I see, you said the blind man couldn't see it all, but it was deaf and dumb. Okay. Fred, yeah. the taxation part should be a no brainer. Are we on? That is a no brainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we on? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ready to go. Okay, moving on to public comment period. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. I'm all set. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, rain gardens, and I understand Mr. Bean was a very uh, vibrant auctioneer there. Apparently the rain barrels uh, auction went well and the uh, Conservation Commission realized over $900. I forget the exact figure, uh, that's going toward the um, putting in and maintaining of two rain gardens on private property uh, this year. So that's pretty neat. Uh, in addition, I sat um, for the first time on the uh, SAU 90 committee for uh, the refurbishing of Hampton Academy. Uh, it was a great turnout uh, on the 13th of May, about 24 of us there. Uh, the SAU has all the ducks in a row, as usual. Their uh, project representatives, uh, the Trident Group representatives were there. They were wonderful. And the idea is to go forward. We have uh, 
uh, teachers on the uh, committee, uh, obviously the uh, superintendent and business uh, manager, and we have uh, parents who have children in the school system now, parents or who went through the school system themselves, parents like myself who put four kids through the school system, and uh, it's a wonderful committee, even a nice gentleman who worked with Superintendent Gaylord in the SAU 21 a while ago. So our next meeting is June 3rd, and we are, our target is around October to early November because the school board wants to get a uh, bond article set for the March town meeting. Uh, I'm delighted and, and uh, really commend the school board for their work on this and their idea to try to refurbish the existing uh, historic wonderful building and make it a more modern and safer area for um, the youngsters who are learning a lot differently now than we did in the old days. So uh, I'm really proud of the committee. It was very exciting and I'll keep you posted. And we are going to be looking for support from the entire community and from all the voters next March to make the refurbishment of the Academy a reality. So that was very exciting, and I wanted to share it with you. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the rain barrel auction was, was a lot of fun. There were some hard-driven hard, uh, hard -driven bargains, and I was uh, allowed by bidders to purchase the beach scene. And to those uh, <laughs> students at the junior high school that uh, did that, and all the other barrels, they did a wonderful job, yeah. and it's a great cause, and it was a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, just not to be confusing, Mr. Wardell, this was announcements and community calendar. So, did you have oh. any announcements? No, I'm set. <laughs> okay, can we um, go out of line and bring up um, our Eagle Scout, uh, our Eagle Scout uh, John Willis. 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 How do you pronounce your name? Uh, Willis. Willis, okay, thank you. Um, so, basically, I'm here tonight to talk to you guys about my Eagle Scout proposal that I do need um, a town beneficiary to sign on. Um, what my project is, in a brief summary, is um, every year we put towns up in Hampton for Memorial Day and Veterans Day and whatnot, and um, they're getting in pretty rough shape. So what I'd like to do to really like beautify Hampton and stuff is to replace all the flags. Um, there are 10 currently. Um, dig new holes and then add an additional 10 so we'll have total um, of 20 new flags and um, new dug holes and um, and it would just look really nice and kind of respectful of the veterans and everybody else um, also to talk about Eagle Scout projects it's a lot of fundraising and whatnot um, luckily I was able to fundraise $600 before coming to this throughout my um, scouting path which has been 11 years I've had a scout account and have got up to a $600 and then the rest I will hopefully be fundraising throughout a burger burn and I have also been contacting a few people um, to sponsor my project as well in full payment um, so that's a huge part and then also to bring up an aspect of um, safety for the roads and whatnot, um, I have a volunteer uh, police officer who can hopefully um, do the police detail work, um, not paid and volunteer. Um, but to get in more detailed of the project, what I'd like to do is there's 10 holes right now in the sidewalks. I'd like to fill them as they are full of debris and not accessible to put in the flags very well. Um, after that is filled, I will be digging 20 new holes. and I have a map of where they will be, 25 feet apart. Um, once I dig the new holes, I plan on putting a 6 inch deep PVC pipe into those holes to keep it so it's kind of better for the flags and the bottoms don't rot out. Um, and so debris doesn't come in, I plan on putting a cap that stays inside of the holes so water can still get through but the rocks and the leaves and everything else will stay out so our flags can fit in pretty nicely. Um, the flags, I flag poles I chose were to do wooden dowels and to treat it with weatherproof uh, material which will look really nice. The wood 
looks really nice with the flags and then also I will be using a 3 by 5 foot all weather flag for the project as well um, any questions really I mean I think it may help to see the map and the layout of everything if you'd like or I can answer any questions you guys may have okay thank you thank you John for coming out tonight and thank you for being patient thank you for on a time. busy night Mr. Waddell Thank you very much, and, and what a great project, and what a great idea, and good preventative medicine, <coughs> putting the cap on and doing it properly, which is really great, and uh, I, I think it's super. And how much are you going to have to raise totally? Um, hopefully, with my six hundred dollars already raised, I should only have to raise about another four or five hundred dollars. And um, like I said, I have talked to a few um, companies like GMI and Sharp Construction, which is a company up north, um, to hopefully. F uh, sponsor the rest of the project so I won't have to pay much or fundraise much. Um, I am on a time constraint. I procrastinated a little bit only because um, I had some trouble with a troop I was in before and am now retiring in the troop I first started in, uh, which is 176. Um, so I'm kind of getting back on track and will have this done by July 14th if all goes well tonight and with my Eagle Scout board. Um, also with maintenance, I didn't bring up uh, the Troop 176, which I'm in all money extra from the fundraisers or sponsorship. Any money saved will go to them to continue ma maintenance, and they have taken full <coughs> responsibility for the maintenance as well. Mrs. Wolseley. Uh, you certainly are an impressive spokesman for your project. I hope you get extra credit for sitting through what was for you probably a really boring meeting. I was interested. Um, <laughs> The former Chief Sullivan, who is now the assistant manager, uh, gave several thumbs up to you uh, as he was uh, going from the room a few minutes ago. He and his sons for years were the ones who put the flags out. It's a great project, and you are a terrific representative for your troop and for us as a community. Thank you, John. Great. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Mr. Chairman, I have no questions of this fine young man. Thank you very much. Thank you. So do we have to have any type of a motion or anything, Mr. Welch? It would be nice to have an official motion to put on the record. Uh, I make a motion that we back this project. I second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Does, do we get um, young John together with Public Works or well, anything he on this? He's all works. set on the side. Super. Talked to our public uh, you covered answered all the every question that could have possibly been before the questions were even asked. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, I do have some documentation I wouldn't like yep. to be signed from some of you. So okay, great. I will wait for the end of the meeting or whenever. No, you, you can bring it up. Yeah, yeah. Now we'll just sign it. Home study, kid. Home study. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You're a great kid. God bless him. <clears throat> Final page. I need a beneficiary approval here. Here, right here? Yes. So one more place. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. what you're Thank doing. You. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we're moving back to the consent agenda. I'll so move the consent agenda, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have one <coughs> small question. Is there a second? I'll second it. In Somebody said something about horses and carriages. Now this is showing taxi business license. Does this? Does any of this involve? horse and carriage stuff at the beach? I just literally don't know. 
I have to look at the permit. Oh. Because I, I, I try not to memorize it. Before, oh, before well, we I agree with here. you. Because while I dearly love horses, sometimes the <clears throat> and nothing to do with pedicabs. I'm assuming. No, absolutely well, positively not. I was not. in Dover today. They had their uh, their horse uh, police horse. Oh yeah, horses mounted. Were out. Yes. mounted yeah. patrol was out there in Dover yeah. today. It was very impressive. Read through that. I didn't think that jumped out, but I had somebody say horses. I believe it's the um, <coughs> Charming Fair Farm. Yeah, if you look, it, 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 right. it says right on it that it's a horse yeah. and carriage. Right. Horse and carriage? That's yeah. correct. Okay. And, and they have been here before. And it's a renewal. Okay. I didn't remember that in prior we, years. We actually haven't. This is one organization we have had no problems with, with uh, <coughs> pickup of material. Yes. Okay. And this restricted to the beach? It's restricted to the beach. That's correct. Mm. Okay. Not on the beach, but to the beach. Okay. All those in favor? Three? Um, a little, well, okay. Against? But I'm, I just don't want to hear favor about... Or I don't want to hear about... Uh, are you in favor problems. or... Yes, I'll, I'll okay, go with so it. Okay, so all just, four to zero. All in favor. Yep. Moving on to appointments, Christy Pulliam. Pulliam, do you want to hear the do please you want to hear don't the keep every time I say yeah. something, Mrs. Wolsey. I wish you would not correct me, even if I'm wrong, unless it has something to do with what's going on at the meeting. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Christy. It's paying me to go fast. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are the uh, April financials. Um, the target is 33.3%. Uh, the month's total income was 597000 Motor vehicles came in at 279000 which is over the target by uh, 49000 for motor vehicles. The other major contributors, contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at 52000 building permits at 23000 Departmental income at thirty-eight thousand, rice sewer at thirty-two thousand, parking lots at uh, forty-two thousand. Uh, that does include some releases in that number, though. So I don't want anyone to think we made forty-two thousand on uh, daily lots in April. And the real estate trust at fifty-nine thousand, and highway subsidy at fifty-six thousand. The expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of April, the operating, operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 33.76% of the budget, which is over the month's target by $177,000. Mm. There are several, um, overall, the, most of the departments as a whole are running under the target of 33.3%. There are several subline lines that are either right on target or slightly over. Um, Last month, for the first time, I, under each department, if anyone had a significant overage, I pointed that out in my financials. I plan to continue to do that unless you guys uh, don't want me to, and then I will stop. But I kind of just have been highlighting anything that's not considered like a semi-annual or a quarterly payment. If there's any line items that are significantly over target, I uh, will point those out to you guys. Uh, that being said, in finance, supplies and expenses, and... Overtime wages are, are at 50%. Uh, That's related mostly to the cost of the annual reports and overtime needed for end of year and audit. So those two expenses have come and gone. Uh, in assessing contracted services is over budget by 21000 MIS, the four equipment-related accounts, when combined together, are currently at 36.79%, which is 2000 over budget. General government buildings, heating fuel is 71% spent. Ooh. Cemeteries, electric is 79.6% spent. The police department is at 29.5% overall when the open POs are included. Some accounts in, of note are crime control and investigations, training and recruitment, traffic control and patrol maintenance, vehicle maintenance and intoxilizer. 
support services, vacation wages, and supplies and expenses, and under police stations and building, uh, OT wages, heating fuel, and water. The fire department is at 32.1% overall with open POs. Some accounts of note are under administration, staff development, under suppression, overtime wages, under communication, uh, rentals and leases, and under fire station and buildings, electric water and heating fuel. Highways and streets is over target at 54.8% spent. This is primarily due to the snow and ice removal costs, which are currently at 305%. Some other accounts to note are the, under administration, the overtime wages, heating fuel, rentals and leases, diesel fuel, and vehicle maintenance. Municipal sanitation is running just below target at 29.9%. Some accounts to note here under administration are electric, heating fuel, diesel fuel, landfill operations, uh, groundwater monitoring, transfer station overtime wages, heating fuel, and supplies and expenses. Animal control is running below target, but note that the overtime wages are at 63.5%. Uh, culture and recreation, some accounts to note are administration are overtime wages in the telephone and in maintenance of parks is heating fuel. At the bottom of page 15 is the accounting of the 2014 encumbrances showing that 56% of those encumbrances have been expended to date and we're still working to close out a lot of those purchase orders. Uh, recreation, the beach sticker donations year to date equal $6,860 with $1,137 being awarded as scholarships. The wastewater system development charge um, collected through April is at $88,623. And uh, cable police detail and EMS, there's nothing real exciting to report on any of those at the time. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. <laughs> Good report. It's scary to see the utilities, especially at this time of year. I know I certainly had used more oil uh, over the winter, <coughs> during the past winter season, and uh, the electric certainly has gone up. So it's a little scary to be this early in the year and see the utility costs um, pretty much shooting up. Uh, great report. Uh, and I am uh, really delighted to see money coming in in the sewer um, buy-in uh, area. So thank you for that. Now that we're it's in spring and construction season, I'm hoping to see more money there. I did ask uh, Christy today if, oh, and the franchise fee, as long as you're here. I noticed that we did get, uh, I had it here somewhere. We did get a notice from Comcast, here it is, that we received uh, $77,402.13 for the first three months of this year. I think people are always interested to see the franchise fee payment coming in. So that's That a, just came in last week, so that'll be on the May. Yep, so that's a good, uh, good payment uh, for the first quarter. And I did ask Christy today if she could, at her convenience, no big rush, provide us with a copy, uh, and I think the board should get one of these every year, of the non-union wage schedule, like the one we got last year, because of our April 1st um, targeting for non-union raises when we have the money. I think that every year the selectmen should get a copy of that, because the employees do change, and I think it helps us not just <coughs> to see the contract uh, employees, but to see the non-union as well. So I appreciate that, no no rush, but I think that will be helpful to us. Mr. Bean. I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. Mr. Waddell. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, good report. I just have a few questions. Um, on the revenue, mm -hmm. is that on target? I mean, it, it's 31% and it's 33%. Is that, yep. is that normal? Yep. Okay. I think that's right in line with what it normally is. Okay. All right. Like she, like Mrs. Wolsey just pointed out, that doesn't include like the franchise fees, which mm -hmm. came in after the April report and stuff. So those types of things, depending on timing. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, the general government building, like Mrs. Wolsey just said, seventy one percent spent already. Oh yeah. Uh, is that just the, the the high cost of electricity, the mm -hmm. and oil, oil or, or oil. whatever? We're well, it's gas. 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 
Yes. Right. And the other one that I that I questioned, and, and I know I know the, the reason exactly is the highway and streets. Uh -huh. And are we still with the federal government? Are we still crossing our fingers and hoping? And I tried to. It's get going to require a flying carpet because they just rejected Massachusetts appeal. So just oh, the did. third day of yeah. the storm. We're, and we we're, yeah, we're expecting they're going to reject it. Okay, but we have everything. You We've submitted everything to FEMA last week. Okay. Um, they, Richie uh, Sawyer and I had met with them the Tuesday before. They gave us five to ten days to get everything in. So everything was sent in to them, I believe, either last Wednesday or Thursday, asking for a response back that they at least receive it. I haven't heard. I tried to follow up with them today and was unsuccessful. Uh, there was no, like, voice message to leave or anything. So I told Fred that I would... Um, try another email again tomorrow and then call. Um, that was dealing directly with our gentleman from the federal government. If I don't get any response tomorrow, I'll call. We do have a local um, representative, too, who came down and introduced the federal um, employee to us. So I will call her and say, hey, you know, just make sure that they got our stuff because we did submit everything to them. Right. The other thing was... Um On a couple of things that, that like uh, repair and maintenance on a lot of stuff, like under finance, under you was wait was eighty percent, mm -hmm. and that's. I didn't point that out um, for the reason that that's one of those ones that I believe in that line item. There's about a ten thousand uh, dollar payment that we pay in January for our financial software support, um, and that's okay. in that account. Yeah. So those types of things I wasn't pointing out because they're just like one time payments. All right. So. But that's what that is related to. I think it's just over ten thousand. Okay, and then that's probably the same thing in MIS. Yes. And, yep. And well, at the, MIS, you have to look at those four accounts together because those are the ones we've been trying to line up, but haven't okay. been successful. All right. And staff development in MIS, that was uh, that was where. Yeah, planned. that's one of those the um, accounts that isn't aligned properly. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good job. Thank you for your report. Sorry that I mispronounced your name. I'm always thinking, is it an N or an N on that's, the end? Yeah, that's okay. So from now on, I'm just going to say Christy. That works, too. Thank you. Yep. We appreciate it. Tongue twisters. Yeah, it is a tongue twister. I should have kept my maiden name. It was Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> that was <easy>. Thank <laughs> you. Was yeah, bye now. Right, thank you. Next, we have Mr. Tinker, the assessor. Yeah, you did. Yeah, we did. What, kid, Ed, do you mind? No, go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry. Go. No, go. He has a longer ride than no, I do. No, Mr. please, Chair. you have the floor. I just have a couple of things. Last week, I was trying to figure out what, why you were here. Well, last I week was, was a very busy week. <laughs> and, I, and I just wanted to say to Christy, um, we had the head of the FEMA office at our village district meeting last week, and she gave us her cards with her direct number so she can get that from Chuck Rage. Uh, and the fact that Mr. Ladd has taken such a proactive stance about the flood zones and the flood insurance, and I wanted to thank you for allowing Jamie, excuse me, Assistant Manager Sullivan, Jason, the Director of Planning, and the young lady that came were very, very informative, and they were very, very great. Um, the line painting, Director Jacobs, his men have done a tremendous job with the line painting and it looks wonderful. I wish it would do more urging of the residents to buy the Diana sticker. That $10 sticker affords Diana scholarship money for children who can't afford to participate with the other children who can at the recreation program. And she runs the best recreation program this side of the Mississippi River. Our meeting with the state on Saturday was probably one of the best meetings we have ever had. And they are working with the Army Corps of Engineers to repair the jetty out into the river. Um, we addressed the bathroom situation at the end of Winnicunnet Road. And um, it was wonderful because Chief Sawyer was there and um, they are in full agreement with that resident that was here last week at public comment about building facilities somewhere in the mm -hmm. vicinity, but not on the islands due to visibility and traffic safety. Um, Senator Stiles, of course, was our usual best. <laughs> and um, I would like to thank Selectman Woosley because also she was there and um, 
she can attest to the fact that we did have a great meeting with the state, probably the best that we've ever had. And I want to thank you all so much for what you do. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Senator Stiles brought the new DOT man over to meet me today, and uh, they had pretty much the same thing to say as what you just said. <coughs> thank you. Sorry that we messed up on the public comment. Mr. Tinker. Good evening. Um, Hi, Ed. Tonight, um, I'm presenting um, the remainder of the 2014 abatements. Um, I have seven total that I've uh, given you for your review and <clears throat> questions and approval, hopefully approval. Um, one of them, the first one would be for the tax collector, uh, three items that we needed or she needs to clean the books up on to balance the books so there's no refund involved in that. I have six additional um, Four uh, recommended for approval, two recommended for denial. The approval amount is $7,822.55. I also um, gave each each of you a spreadsheet. Um, it's not complete as to uh, interest that would be um, added to these, but just to give you an idea, this year we had uh, 21 total abatements, um, and the refund amount currently is Fourteen thousand five hundred eighteen dollars and seventy cents. If you have any questions? I can answer those. Or questions for Mr. Tinker? <clears throat> I'm set. Mrs. I'll be Wesley. happy to move that we approve the seven recommended uh, abatements. The seven thousand and what, Ed? Eight two two point five five. Eight two. No, no, no. I. Yeah. Okay. Eight two two point five. And I will be happy eight two two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. it. Was it seconded already? No, I no. think you I need to second, second it. it. Second. And uh, would you incorporate the denials in that motion as well? I think I'd rather do a separate one. Okay, thank we, you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All those in favor? Approvals. Yeah. I'll, now I'll move the three denials. Two. Two denials. I'll second that. Per the uh, assessing officer. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate it. It's Tough tanker. Tough night, Ed. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Is Mr. Uh, Jacobs going to be there? He had to leave. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to present what okay. he had to present. Good. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Jacobs uh, had requested the board. We have a bid. Uh, to replace the drainage on High Street and Lafayette Road. Uh, there was only one bidder. Um, the previous year we had two bidders, uh, but they're all in excess of the appropriation. As you know, at town meeting we had to move to increase the appropriation, including the federal grant. Uh, the total amount appropriated at town meeting was $449,156. The bidder was uh, Jamco Excavators at $372,464. They are the only bidder. You would be required to give a waiver because there is only one bidder and the amount of the contract is in excess of $50,000. Those are the two waivers that are needed. So moved. I'll second for discussion. Okay. Do you have discussion, Mr. Yeah, uh, how many Bordell. companies did they send the bids out to? They or? sent out the bids to six companies, that's okay. my understanding. Um, the problem, and we, we, we did ask the companies before what the problem was, they just simply don't want to work in that traffic nightmare mm. up there. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to work there. Uh, Jamco did say if they are awarded this, they will not do it until late fall. They don't want to get into any heavy traffic up there simply because of the, the narrowness of the roadway. Yeah. Makes it much more difficult. Plus, we have to shut down two lanes on Route, route 1 in order to do the trenching right down the front of Route 1 in front of the stores uh, and then cross over Route 1 to go down to the, uh, uh, the depot and pick up through the easement that's there. It's very difficult work. And the Jamco bid last year or they did bid last year they were one of the bidders last year okay. uh, and they were in the same ballpark as far as cost was concerned but that was um, a 
about a hundred thousand dollars more than we had. Okay. And I read through all this stuff, you know, and they get. <clears throat> it's been reviewed by council. It's been reviewed uh, by Public Works. Um, it appears that the bid is balanced as far as the work is concerned, and uh, the recommendation from Public Works is to approve uh, with the waivers and to move forward with the, with the contract. Mrs. Wolsey. You're more likely to have flooding problems in the spring, which fortunately we didn't have this year. So the fall construction certainly seems more sensible. Um, I am a, a little concerned about the cost, as I was when we put this on the warrant. Now, with the warrant article of 449, does that give us wiggle room for change orders if necessary? It does. Just pray that they aren't very big change orders. Uh, but I'm anticipating with a project like this, you're probably going to be looking at change <coughs> orders. Well, it's, it's possible. I, um, I have told them point blank that <clears throat> I have this um, problem with signing change orders. So uh, they understood that. They've done a couple of projects in the town in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, I was very stingy on the change orders. But mm -hmm. they managed to finish the projects mm -hmm. at the bid price. Yeah. But it can happen, it can especially happen. this is a really tough this, one. This is a bad area to work in. Yeah. There's a lot of underground utilities there. Uh, there's any possibility that you can get in trouble, it's going to be probably in an mm -hmm. area like this. Yep. Mr. Bean. It's a very small pizza box. I'm thankful for the uh, director and your leadership on the issue, and I'm thankful that uh, Jamco stepped up. Thank you. So all those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to the town manager's report, <clears throat> Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, um, just want to remind everybody, and, and the uh, electronic signs are going up, Household Hazardous Waste Day is Saturday, May 30th at the Public Works Department on Haddad's Way from 8 a.m. to noontime. Uh, please look on our website because the material you may deposit is listed there. Uh, and also the material that if you <coughs> wish to bring, but pay for is also listed yeah, there. That's there are some items we can't take simply because of the nature of the item. Uh, the town clerk's office will be closed on Wednesday, May 20th. Uh, they are required to attend state training on that day and will not be present. The state has notified us that coast, the coastal beach water sampling will begin on May 26th with a Monday through Thursday schedule each week and that will end on September 2nd. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of other things here that uh, we're important to folks as we, we progress through the week, uh, and hopefully they'll be important to you. Uh, this one is an, an article that went in the newspaper. Uh, the police department is going to be conducting firearms training for the officers on May 16th from 9 to 1900 hours. Yeah. Uh, from uh, on May 26th and 30th from 9 to 1900 hours on 6 June uh, from 9 to 1900 hours and, and on 13 June from 9 to 1900 hours. These are required training under the, under the state requirements for the officers to be qualified to carry firearms. We heard them this weekend. <laughs> it's hard to miss that distinctive yeah. sound. Um, we have a request from UNITEL which I think is fairly important. Uh, you're probably all aware of the fact that <clears throat> the properties at number 128 to 130 Ashworth Avenue are being demolished mm -hmm. and a new building is being erected there. They need to have your permission to cut into Auburn Avenue, which is a brand new roadway. Uh, they've got to go in about three feet uh, to cut the gas services. Failure to do that means the building will not be demolished and the new building will not be constructed. Um, and of course they're in a bad situation here. We will be requiring them to replace the, the pavement and to heat the pavement to at the point where it becomes a homogeneous mass again as if it was just paved. So Public Works is working on that. That's not going to be a problem for them. Uh, and the, the gas company asked today if I would please bring this to the board for permission to make that cut. There are going to be uh, four gas services uh, that will be uh, cut off at that location, and I believe that there are four small uh, incisions in the in the pavement uh, that will have to be made, and they'll have to replace those. The two by four, four foot openings each, 
in one four by four foot opening. Uh, they're all on Auburn Avenue, and one, one's on Auburn Avenue extension. So moved. I'll second it. You make it sound like a surgical procedure. Actually, it is. It's pretty much a surgical <laughs> but procedure. But the agreement, in order for Unitil to do that, uh, we will we will simply not accept anything less than really good patching. And they are responsible for five years to maintain oh, perfect. it. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Thank All those you. in favor, unanimous. Good. Is that it, Mr. Welch? That is it, sir. Questions for Mr. Welch? Mr. Wardell? No, I'm set. Mrs. Walsley. Um, Fred, the uh, flood letters. Are you? You have? Like, we have a draft, or? No, I don't. Uh, public you... Works and, and excuse me, uh, Building Department and and uh, Planning Board are working on that. I've asked oh, the Jamie to uh, to sort of sit in on what's going on, so that we will have those going out as soon as we can. I know the precinct, <coughs> excuse me, has offered to pay for half the cost of sending yes, those letters out. Yes, the postage, yeah. Uh, and I know that uh, conservation is, is also working on it and, and trying to uh, get everything put together so we can identify, we hope, all of the properties involved. But we're using a federal flood map that they've issued, and it really doesn't identify any properties. It just gives yeah. us a shaded oh, yeah. view of the whole town. So we're going to have to try to put that together. and. Yeah. Assessing is certainly helping us do that. And if I recall, those maps are temporary. I mean, they, they're not finalizing those maps. They become final in September, September. Yeah. Uh, unless the town hires engineers and goes out and surveys all this land and, and, and files an appeal. Yeah. Uh, unless you've got a few hundred thousand dollars sitting around someplace I'm not aware of, I don't <laughs> think you could probably do that. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to old business. Any old business? Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, I do. Uh, Walter got ahead for me a little bit, which is good. Walter is always exciting. I did attend the uh, preseason overview sponsored by DREAD on Saturday the 16th. Uh, very good attendance. And it was a great meeting. Senator Stiles, of course, was there and Christy. Um, and Brian Wilson, and a nice young lady who I believe is going to be the supervisor, and I forgot her name, who's going to be the supervisor, day-to-day -day supervisor of, of the operations. Uh, Michael Hausman was there, John Nyan did the introductions, and uh, Walter has already mentioned the jetty, which is good. Um, we did have a discussion on bathrooms, and just about everybody in the room was saying that the state does need another bathroom somewhere in the vicinity, either your property or by Winnicott, whatever, because people simply will not walk up to the bathrooms at High Street and 1A. And, uh, and I mentioned to them that really people are very tired of having individuals undress uh, in their front yard or um, use um, Mr. Griffin's yard as a um, <coughs> facility. So there was good um, support from individuals present. Um, Commissioner Buckley was there, I mean, uh, from uh, uh, the precinct. Uh, the plowing, and, and I was remembering what you said, Rick, I asked if the contractors, and it's probably DOT, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to ask, if the contractors in the winter for plowing get any instructions or uh, information on the private properties on the west side of 1A, so that they're not pushing all the snow into the little old lady's yard who lives next door to you, if they get an idea what's private property and where they can push some of the snow. So I just dropped that as a uh, suggestion. And uh, also the benches, they're putting new benches down at the beach and the uh, less fancy benches are going for 1200 each and the more Elaborate benches are going for 5000 each, and you can contact Dredd if you have a memorial bench idea that you would like to propose for someone. My final thought from that meeting, however, is this. At the end of the meeting, I took the opportunity to talk with Director of Dredd, Mr. Parks and Resources, uh, Mr. Price. I asked him, and this is in conjunction only with the joint operations plan, 
Uh, I told him that for the two years that I've been back on this board, I've been told that the uh, administration in Concord is refusing to meet with our board uh, publicly and that I would certainly appreciate an opportunity to be able to have some input into discussions on the joint operation plan because we'll have another one coming up before uh, April 1st of next year. And he said that he uh, welcomes contact with boards of selectmen. Uh, he has no such um, inhibitions about coming down. I looked the man in the eye, Fred, and he said to me he has no problems at all. I wouldn't expect him to uh, be running over here every week, but he said he has no problem with that. Um, Chief Sawyer was there. And he was saying that he feels that his discussions on law enforcement with Dredd would not be appropriate in public, and I absolutely agree with him. But for just the generic discussions on the joint operations plan, uh, I, want, I asked if we could possibly uh, invite Mr. Bryce and or staff down when we are ready to do the next uh, meeting. He was very good. He was not evasive. He didn't uh, look around the room and say, someone get this woman away from me. He was very, very cordial, and we had a very nice conversation. So I don't know who's been telling us that I guess Mr. Bryce and his staff won't come down, but he confirmed to me that his opinion was that he would be <coughs> delighted to have uh, contact with local boards of selectmen. So that's the result of my Mr. Boyd. I have no uh, comment, sir. Mr. Waddell. Yep. Yeah. I would just like to say that, um, you know, I did talk with uh, Senator Stiles today, and she did bring the new man from, in from DOT, and they did mention about um, possibly putting um, the uh, bathrooms into where the parking areas are mm. now. Mm. And it may sound good, but I just wait till all the people that live across the street have their say. Mm. There's going to be a lot of people that won't be happy with it. That's mm. right. So, you know, that's something else. So people another, like you who are having your yard <clears throat> used as facilities. Well, no, that's used. not a real big problem for me. Um, it's more of a problem the ones that come that want to use my indoor bathroom. Uh, so many of them all the time. So I would like to see something done. I just know that being on this board, uh, how in the past, how there were so many problems that came as a result of having uh, bathroom facilities in the parking areas. People have it created a lot of bad will, and that's something that shouldn't necessarily be forgotten. And when they get ready to do that, I guess they would probably do it without our uh, say to begin with. But I think these people that live in these areas need to be informed that they're going to have porta potties in front of their properties. Okay, moving on to new business. Oh, oh, where are we? That was new business. Oh, no, it wasn't. No, this business. is new business right now. I don't Mr. Waddell. I'll set. Mrs. Wolseley. I don't believe I had anything for new Mr. business. Mr. Bean. No, sir. And I, uh, one item, we Mr. have Chair. one item about the sale of police-issued <coughs> equipment, motorcycle boots. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, these, uh, these boots, was, the boots we have for motorcycle officers are specially made specifically for them. Yeah. Uh, they are specially uh, measured and, and, and built for them only. And they're more or less a personal item, but they are town property. Uh, this particular officer has uh, left our employee. He's now going to work for another police department, and he's going to be a motorcycle officer there, and he would like to come back and, and buy the boots um, from the town. I can't tell you what the price is because no one told me. Um, but let's see this page. No, no one told me. Um, in order f for them to, uh, to sell those boots, they need your permission. Uh, under the current uh, disposal of town property uh, ordinance, and that's why it's in front of you. Other than that, uh, they probably will be thrown away. Do they need a motion? motion? Yeah. Yes, I'll, you do. I'll so second. We, that we yeah. do it. All those in favor, unanimous. 
Um, do we have to go into a private session? Uh, do you want yes. to do the minutes? Yes. Um, do you want to do the minutes? You, you did miss the minutes. So okay, um, we'll go back. I'll, I'll did move. you? Uh, At the close of your meeting, if you would uh, please, uh, a, a motion would be in order under RSA 91 hyphen A colon 2 Roman 3 small c and small e uh, to go into a non-public session uh, by roll call vote uh, to discuss uh, matters that may affect uh, reputation of a person and also uh, matters in litigation. Okay, so we're going to go back to the minutes and then we'll make that motion. That rolls off his tongue with a perfectly straight face. I'm going to make a motion to accept the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Any uh, These are the changes? public minutes. No. All in favor? Unanimous. Now, would someone like to make that motion? I'll make. I'll move the non-public same date. And a second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. And that uh, was a roll call, I guess. Aye. So yes. aye. No, they're doing minutes. Good night, Max. No. <laughs> you guys know one no. question. That's the motion. I mean, that's the motion to go into non-public. Non-public. So everyone said aye. Yes. Correct. Aye. Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, any, and so that's it. Thank you very much.